What's up everyone and thank you for choosing to learn with Lamb. Today we've got a quick lesson on molar enthalpy and how to differentiate it from plain old regular enthalpy. First things first, molar enthalpy describes the change in enthalpy for one mole of a substance in a reaction. So in other words, if you're conducting an experiment using only one mole of a specific substance and assuming you have enough of everything else you need, how much energy does the reaction release or absorb? The really important thing to be aware of is this one mole here. Molar enthalpy is concerned with the change in enthalpy per each mole. So let's take a look at the related equation. The equation for molar enthalpy is delta H naught equals delta H over little n. Delta H naught is molar enthalpy and it's measured in kilojoules per mole. Delta H is enthalpy, which is measured in kilojoules, and little n here is moles, and its unit is mole. Now, for those of you having a bit of trouble wrapping your heads around molar enthalpy, I thought I'd bring back something familiar that is a perfect analog to molar enthalpy, and that's our old friend molar mass. The molar mass equation is big M equals little m over little n, and just to highlight the similarities, Big M is molar mass in grams per mole, little m is mass in grams, and little n again is moles in mole. Now, notice here how both molar enthalpy and molar mass are molar values, meaning they are concerned with data per mole. All right, quick example here. Say we're dealing with the combustion of methane and we're told that the molar enthalpy of combustion of methane is negative 890 kilojoules per mole. What this means is that when we combust methane, we release 890 kilojoules for each mole of methane. Similarly, let's look at carbon over here. The molar mass of carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. So again, when we're looking at carbon, there's 12.01 grams for each mole of carbon. Now, people ask sometimes, well, what's the enthalpy of the reaction? And I counter with, well, what's the mass of carbon? And that's the thing. It depends, right? It depends on how much carbon you have. The more carbon you have, the larger its mass. Well, it's the same with enthalpy. The more methane we burn, the more energy we release. So we need to know how much methane we're burning in order to know what the enthalpy is. So if I have 2.00 moles of methane, then enthalpy equals moles, which is 2.00 moles, times molar enthalpy, which is negative 890 kilojoules per mole. Cancel out the units, and that gives me negative 1.98 times 10 to the power of 3 kilojoules. So I'm releasing twice as much energy as I would per one mole, which makes sense because I'm burning double that, which is two moles. Similarly, if we have 2.00 moles of carbon, then mass equals 2.00 moles times 12.01 grams per mole. Cancel out the units, which gives me 24.02 grams. It's the same thing. Another thing that gives people trouble is when the enthalpy and the molar enthalpy have the same number value. If the number values are the same, then aren't molar enthalpy and enthalpy the same? Well, no, their units aren't the same. But let's discuss why the number values can be the same sometimes using mass as our analogy. It's perfectly reasonable for you to happen to have a sample of carbon that has a mass of 12.01 grams. And the reason that it matches our molar mass of 12.01 grams per mole can be solved mathematically. Moles equals mass divided by molar mass. So 12.01 grams divided by 12.01 grams per mole, cancel out the units, gives us 1.000 moles. This should make sense because if you have exactly one mole of carbon, then of course it will have a mass of 12.01 grams, considering our molar mass tells us that each mole of carbon has a mass of 12.01 grams. And it's the same thing for enthalpy. If your enthalpy has the same number value as your molar enthalpy, it's just because you're dealing with exactly one mole of that substance. And in this case, one mole of methane releases 890 kilojoules. And that's all there is to it. As always, if you have any questions or if you have topics you want me to cover, just leave them in the comments below. Good job, everyone. If you find that you need a little extra help, please feel free to check out my other videos for tips and tricks on how to succeed in school. And as always, thanks for learning with Lamb.